How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the second episode of the See Through Panel podcast, focused on anything comics, graphic no- novels, or sequential art. In this episode, we're going to keep it brief. We're going to just going to discuss. Uh, it looks like our six six recommendations a piece for your quarantine reading. My name is Cole Harvey. Uh, I will not give much of a spoiler warning in this one because I don't really think we're going to spoil the books. More just want to get you to read the books. So that would be the opposite of our plan here. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, it's uh, Fahed Rahman, co-host of this podcast, and I'll also be reading out some of the um, choices for reading in isolation that I've uh, made. All right, so I guess I'll just get started. We kind of broke this up a little bit into genre, so if we have a matching genre, we're going to try and fit it in, but we just kind of did our own thing. Maybe get some stuff the other hasn't read. So I'll open with a sci-fi kind of dystopian adventure romance, which is a lot of stuff. But uh, it's called The New World. It's by Alesh Kot. Alesh Kot? Not sure. And Trad Moore, who a lot of you might know from the recent Silver Surfer Marvel thing he did, Silver Surfer Black. But this is a story about a criminal, a hacker uh, guy who basically bumps into and falls in love with a the most kind of popular police officer in this town, city. And a lot of hijinks ensue. The art is just eye-popping. And uh, I, I would say just visually, you should check this out. If you've ever seen Treadmore before, it is the colors are insane. And there's an, a ridiculous amount of lines on the page. So that's mine. My uh, first choice is a fantasy adventure book. It's Bone by Jeff Smith. Uh, I'm, I'm not too sure how long the, the lockdown's going to last, but you should be able to get through at least um, two or three of the trade paperbacks that are in um, black and white, and it tells the story of um, uh, the three cousins Bone as they uh, venture into um, kind of this fantasy adventure village setting, and it's... Um, beautifully told and beautifully drawn and um yeah it's one of the best uh, fantasy adventure series i think that's ever been um committed to graphic novel format i think a lot of people would definitely agree with that it's also a really good all ages book so if you're locked in with your family for another month hopefully not it's really good to read to kids nieces nephews and stuff like that yeah and for me at the moment i'm i'm trying to find books that um perhaps are a little bit less gritty and offer a bit more escapism so a lot of few quite a few of my um uh, choices kind of reflect that you need, you just disappear into the um the bone the boneville universe and um kind of forget about kind of what's happening in the uh, rest of the outside world oh yeah i have mostly a similar list on that in that sense except for one which I will get to soon, that completely is the opposite of that. For my adventure comic, I decided to go with, it's also my only superhero comic, uh, Batman Universe by Brian Michael Bendis and art by Nick Darrington. I just read this yesterday, actually, and in terms of superhero comics, it's like the most superhero comic you can get. There's a, like all the DC characters dinosaurs ninjas they go to space ninjas with jetpacks just crazy stuff and the art by nick darrington is like just imagine frank quietly but cartoony kind of oh interesting it's very it's very good the the color work is awesome too and it's just kind of like four color four color superhero comics it's really fun and for a guy like me that's kind of burnt out on standard superhero stuff it was just conventional like the most straightforward fun it was very um easy to read i guess okay, so um my next choice is also a superhero graphic novel um and i'm recommending any of the astro city trade paperbacks um that are written by kurt busiek i would say maybe the, the first one is i mean it's still a great great um great graphic novel but um maybe skip the first one because it's it's, it's a little bit of um world sitting but um any of the other ones are absolutely kind of top tier 
superhero storytelling and the, the beauty about it is because um, each of the trade pack paperbacks are self-contained stories you don't need to read the one before or the one after you're getting a whole story in in in, in one trade paperback and you're not going to feel kind of like out of depth with perhaps some of these other superhero trade paperbacks where you, you're missing out on masses of bump oh yeah it doesn't have all the baggage you don't have to go read like superman from the 80s to read this which is nice yeah um on for my next one i'm gonna go with a comedy fantasy kind of mashup. This is Orkstain by James Stokoe, but I could just as easily recommend Wonton Soup or Aliens Dead Orbit or anything James Stokoe has done because he's an absolute monster on the page. He he does these literally gigantic pages. He draws them original size. Gi- they're gigantic. And there's lines all over, and it's just a visual treat. I can't describe it at all. It would do no justice. And the story is just insane. It's a world of orcs. And, you know, I really would sound insane if I tried to go into the plot here, but just take my word for it. It, You won't understand a lot of what's going on, but it's very funny. And it's very, it kind of left me in awe of how imaginative this guy was just because of the work he was doing both as the writer and artist. Uh, It was, it was amazing. Um, Usually when you, You've got artists that do these massive panoramic um, panels. It can be occasionally be kind of difficult to follow and seeming sometimes a little bit self indulgent. But James James Stalko is, you know, as you said, an absolute monster on the page, and it's just so engrossing when you, when you see some of the, yeah. especially some of his action set pieces and his his world building, especially um in um in Orkstein, is very original and very very funny and um it's, it's if i remember correctly it sounds a little bit violent as well so maybe it's a bit violent yes. the, yeah to keep it out out of the um out of the the younger members of your if you're of your family if you're if you are self isolating i would say younger, younger yeah, mature mature readers on that one they use a very sensitive part of the male body as currency i'll say yes yes yeah so um <laughs> talking about a, a romance uh we're talking about uh, sensitive parts of the uh, male body <laughs> the next one is to do with um uh, is a romance and um i'm choosing uh, blossoms in autumn the artist is zidru and the author my apologies for the pronunciation is amy dijon i believe it is is how it's pronounced and it's it's just a really kind of lovely heartwarming tale of these two people meeting and falling in love later in life and it's just it's just like a a warm a warm lovely warm hug it's it's, it's, it's a very very nice story about two uh, older people meeting later in life and, and falling in love so that's I, I really have to say about that one that does sound really nice that's the kind of stuff i've been trying to read lately in yes. this in this in this uh weird time you don't really want to be reading the the blood and gut stuff. I'm definitely going to mark that down. So, man, I have to follow up with something real personal. So I'll do Glenn Ganges in the River at Night by Kevin Heisinger. It's H-U-I. So I think it's Kevin Heisinger. This is a book about a guy named Glenn Ganges, obviously, who drank too much coffee. He drank a whole pot of coffee before bed. And he can't sleep. And it's about, I would just guess, like 100 some pages, 150 odd pages about this guy who can't sleep, which sounds horribly boring. But it is a really detailed look into the human psyche. And there's all these deep thoughts swirling around him while he's trying to go to bed. So he goes and does other stuff, but it doesn't work. It's actually also very funny. The art is just the most simple lines kind of cartoon style very spare but it does the job and i mean it it does end up being beautiful in its own right just the way he works the colors and kind of fits the almost very psychedelic at times story into the art because it is a writer artist uh kind of situation that's um, i'm I'm looking at the the art now yeah it looks very interesting i'm gonna check that out 
it doesn't want to you don't you don't want to read it immediately when you, when I, you hear what it's about or anything i don't think but when i read it i i read it all in one sitting it was so engaging the next one again for me i will we'll, we'll kind of keep with a maybe, maybe a little bit of a, a lighter theme is uh, pyongyang by guy de Lille. it's a travel log about his uh, adventures in pyongyang he was uh, he's a guy is a uh, animator by trade and he went to pyongyang to supervise north korean uh, animators for for uh, i think a french tv show that he was um working on and it's kind of a fish out of water slightly comedic slightly kind of it gives an insight into the world of kind of the, the republic of north korea with you know, the slightly humorous edge i would say so that's that's kind of our my, my next choice again I love guys art. It's very simple, but it kind of gets a gets across the gets across the point quite quite well as well. I have not read anything from him yet, but as I told you earlier, I ever since you mentioned his name in the last podcast, I have been looking into him. He's going to be on my shelf here soon. Yes. Next up, I'll go with I'd say my last my last nice one before we get to my last pick here. This is uh, well, it's not nice. It's an adaptation of the. War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, very obviously well-known, by Ian Eddington, writing, and Disraeli uh, on art. He, this kind of, well, it's just a straightforward adaptation of the original work. There is minor differences, and I'd say the main draw in this is the art of Disraeli. But what I recommended this for is because it goes into another book called Scarlet Traces, which is kind of what would happen if it was present day and War of the Worlds did in fact happen and we were left with this Martian technology, what would the future look like? And so Disraeli's art is kind of this insane, cartoony, but realistic, I have no idea how to describe it, art that I've, I've never really seen a lot like it, so it's hard for me. But the story is just a really cool concept. And I won't say it's a super feel-good book, but it's a super interesting book. And it doesn't really have a tone like a lot of other books I own. So that's kind of why I went with it. Yes. Um, so I've got three three choices left. I'm going to kind of bundle two of them uh, together. So these are my two kind of nonfiction, uh, heavy nonfiction choices. So if you're looking to expand your mind a little bit and maybe read something a little bit um, heavier, the first is uh, Logi Comics, uh, Epic Search for the Truth. And it's by three Greek creators. So it's uh, Apostol, Los Doxiades, Christos, Papa Demetrio, and the artist is Alex Kos, Papa Datos. And it's basically the history of logic and kind of starting from ancient Greek, uh, ancient Greece, all the way to kind of um, modern day um, philosophy and maths. And it's, you know, part kind of teaching you un- to understand mathematical concept part history book part kind of um sociological political discussion about how you know the these these concepts and maths are sometimes misused by the people in power really really good it'll make you feel a lot smarter after you've read it and then my my second choice is super crash by um daryl cunningham and that is a look at um why the financial crash happened and not just kind of what the mechanics of it was, but also looking into the, the history and the philosophy of the main players that have called and allowed this massive financial disaster to take place as well. So those are my um those are my two kind of heavier nonfiction reads. Man, I'm glad you got those because I had I had nothing in intellect- that intellectual to offer. Wow. I need to get on that. That's some. That's a. That's a type. A genre that I haven't really delved into, but uh, I need to get in that. I think my last one is less of. I'll cheat a little bit, like you cheated. I'm just gonna go with a general artist. It's definitely not feel good. This is manga and it's horror, like gross, gross body horror. Uh, I recommend Junji Ito. Oh, uh, dude. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. If you made it this far through all the recommendations, maybe you don't want something nice. Maybe you just want to like just be horrified. And this stuff is gross. Like everything he does is gross. I own 
almost I'm every wrecked. book by him. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. If you, I hope you're not looking at the pictures now. I'm not even going to open one of these yeah. books. Um, it, it's amazing. Like his his detail is so intricate, but you don't even want to look at it at all. <laughs> you just want to turn the page, which I assume is why these go so fast when I read them. Because I think I've read all of his books in one sitting, like individually, obviously. But he's yeah, he's so I've, prolific. I've not read any of his work um but i was at a uh, exhibition last year and they did kind of a whole kind of exhibition on, on manga and some of his artwork was on display and it, it was really <sighs> disturbing it's really it's kind of a, really kind of just like, yeah that's yeah maybe not for me actually <laughs> I, I couldn't read it when i first got into comics i saw it everyone was recommending it and i was like i cannot i'm not going to read that and then i read some horror for a while and i was like okay maybe i can do this no but eventually eventually i could look at the damn thing yeah so um my um my last uh my last choice is uh essex county by jeff lemire and it is I would describe it as the great uh, American novel in in graphic novel form. It's, wow! It's it's I I think maybe one of the best graphic novels I've ever read. It's it is, I, and I don't say this lightly. It's it's a masterpiece. Um, it's to sweep it. I can't really get into too much of the description of it without doing some spoilers. But it's it's essentially about um, it's a it's a family saga. Let's let's put it kind of that way and it takes twists and turns that are unexpected so definitely if you've got the the time to track that down that's definitely one to read as well during the um during this lockdown period i actually haven't read essex county i've only read one um jeff lemire writer artist book and that's royal city um, it was you know what that's the one i haven't read i haven't read yeah his, he's got the the watercolors going i assume in all of his all of his books he looks like that Essex County is the, the the copy that I had was, if I remember correctly, black and white, and his um, ink work is very kind of jagged, and the characters are ugly, but they're just they're so full of emotion. It's not the prettiest book to look at, and if I've got one kind of criticism of his art, sometimes some of his actors characters can look a little bit sameness and similar, but it's it's beautifully it's beautifully told it's a beautifully told book yeah i didn't expect that i'm, I'm used to his uh he paints i believe now he does like watercolor type um work and his more recent stuff i mean he's more of a writer now but it's very interesting well that's all the stuff i had i believe me as well thank you very much for your recommendations i'm definitely going to be when i edit this i'm going to be putting all those in a list and just reading them also maybe Maybe you avoid Junji. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, it's good art, but um, maybe not one to read last thing. I do a lot of my reading last thing at night before I go to bed. So <laughs> yeah, I, mm -hmm. don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't really. Yeah. Um, don't really need those images. It's, <laughs> it's not, not for that. that. <laughs> no, um, no, no. We put all the um, uh, full titles and spellings of the the uh, authors in the um, episode description when it's released. Yep. So yeah. I'll probably also put links if I could find them to Amazon and Comixology, respectively, just like I did for springtime, just so people can get to them easier yeah. if they want to buy them. But please try and buy from your local comic book shops. They they do need the help. If you can, if if you've got one in your area, I don't have one in my area, unfortunately. But um, yeah, it's kind of do buy locally if you can. Mine is not open, but they will get you your books. They'll send you stuff. Just all you got to do is call yeah. them. Just, you can help them. You can still buy from them. You might not know it, but you can still buy from them. All right. Well, thanks a lot for your time, man. It was really fun. Cheers, dude. Have a good one. Stay indoors, guys. Stay indoors. Stay indoors. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks. Thanks.